Hi everybody, this is Urkin Fresh, aka Blue Phoenix. I'm back. I've taken a few months off from doing any videos, but uh, hoping to show you something interesting here this time. Uh, I'll be reviewing Sinfire by Cognitone. I'm going to show you what it does because it's kind of kind of hard to grasp. <laughs> um, but basically, it's a music prototyping software. So I'm just going to show you kind of the workflow. And uh, what I've done here is uh, in Ableton, I created a very simple melody. Okay, so it's it's very straightforward. I'm going to export this to my desktop, and uh, we'll just call this uh, we'll call it melody. Okay, we're done with Ableton, so I'm just going to close that now and uh, bring up Sinfire. I have the Express Edition. Uh, there is a Pro version as well. And uh, it just lets you do like more instruments simultaneously. Um, there's some other things with containers it, it does. and I don't know. Express is good enough for me for now. So uh, I can always upgrade later. <laughs> um, so it brings up a few things right away. And it's kind of annoying, but... So basically, I'm going to take that MIDI and uh, I can import the MIDI into Sinfire. Now, Sinfire is going to look kind of like a, a, a DAW, but it really isn't. It's uh, it's different. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Okay, so when you import MIDI, it gives you a whole bunch of options. Uh, I found that the default options are, are pretty good for what I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to hit Start Import and not go all crazy. Um, it does leave that original open original window open it's kind of annoying so let me expand this a little bit and uh, actually what's going on let me move my face a little bit so uh, I will say the the GUI is uh, not great in Sinfire <laughs> it really needs some polish but uh, it's it's not terrible but it's it's not great either so I'm going to change this instrument I've already set up a bunch of instruments here um, I'm not going to show you how that's all done but uh, Basically, I'm going to set it to a piano, and I'm just going to play it when it's imported here. Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit about what this is. I'm going to drop the tempo as well, because I had uh, somewhere around 90 in my Ableton project. So what this is, Sinfire takes your MIDI notes and it translates them into these things called figures. So they look a little weird, but basically uh, these are, they're like the relationship between notes. Um, so these aren't exactly notes like A, B, C, D. So these are a relationship between notes and they create kind of these segments and you'll see that some of these are connected, like these these three notes here are form like one cluster of ideas, so to speak. And this is the next one. You'll notice too, some of these have a plus on them. It means they're kind of halfway between. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, drop those down. The other thing that's weird here is uh, I didn't do this the last time I imported this, but these are an octave down, so I'm going <sighs> to... I am gonna move these up. There we go. I believe that's the one I want. Okay. Okay, so what's going on here is uh, at the top, so okay, so a figure does not make music. You also need to have this harmonic context. That's what's going on up here, this D, B, M, D, B, M, da, 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 da. So if I open up progression here, this is going to tell me what chords are going along with those notes I put in there. So you can tell that I did a little something wrong. Well, maybe not wrong. <laughs> the second part of my melody used notes that weren't technically in the B minor scale. So you can see that there's a different color in those uh, second two bars. What this is telling me is that if I click on this, it's going to give me kind of a demo of what that chord sounds like. So 
So as you can see, as it's playing along, it's going to go through the chord progressions. Of course, you can't hear that because I don't have any pads going yet. But uh, let me let me just add a pad really fast and you can kind of get an idea of what's happening here. So if I go in here and just call this pads and give it a, uh, let's see, new pad right here. Now, one thing that uh, Sinfire can do for you is automatically generate your chords for you based on your progression. So it's going to be a really awesome time saver for you. Um, I think I go under here and do uh, templates, auto chords. So now we got a pad sound very quickly. We can also create a bass line. So once again, I'm going to grab a trusty uh, bass. This one will work. Uh, let me move my face again. Ah, so uh, let's let me just zoom in a bit, and uh, I'm actually going to bring this the size of this down to just one bar. Um, actually, let's just do half a bar just to make this quicker. And uh, I'm going to go. If I hit this, let's say I'm going to create some bass notes here, and I'm going to use this little pencil and do sixteenths. And I got to go in here, and and I meant to put that on the root. I don't know why it's not making any sound as I do this. That's real fun. Probably because that other thing is soloed. So if I hit play on this, you'll see that the bass is going to go along with the chord progression as well. And if I go in here and say uh, one of the... that down there so what that's doing is now those notes have a certain relative <laughs> distance in the figure and that's being applied to the melody and I can make much more complicated rhythms with this um, not in this little bit of space but if I just like bump these around I'm just using arrow keys to do this Well, we want some of these in the root, but you kind of get the idea. Now, this is great because what I've done is I've created a bass line, and that bass line is going to follow the scale, and all the notes are actually going to be in the scale. I don't have to go around bumping all those notes up and down one, which is a very tedious process you can get into when you're creating a bass line in your DAW. So that sounds great and all, but... Okay, so great, we have a melody. Now what? So this is this is where the power of Sinfire is. So I've got these these chords here, but let's say okay, I don't I don't want to use the B in the second half. It sounded kind of flat and boring. So I double click over here and I get this palette, and I can just say okay, well let's try. Uh, in my first half, I've got D B flat or D B M <laughs> D B M. So if I click on those in here, it kind of gives me a sample of what it's going to sound like. And then it's going into this B, which is kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't follow, right? So if I go in here and say I do maybe, uh, I don't know, let me, let me see what I did before. We'll try F sharp. And I will say that the, the bass does tend to do some, some weird stuff. I probably have something not quite set up correctly, but. So. They've got so many different kinds of chords you can choose from in here. It's really flexible. So notice, I, so I've painted in bars three and four. Now let's just play it again. Oops, start over. I told you to start over. There you go. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's a really fast way of uh, trying different ideas. One thing you might notice is like, okay, this starts to get this up, down, up, down. It gets really boring. I can just bump that down and fix that. And then maybe, okay, this, I'll just try that out.
One thing I don't like is when you start to edit a figure, it, it stops the audio. Oh well. <laughs> it's not terrible. So let's say I've, I get in this far and I'm like, ah, you know, I really don't like B minor. B minor sucks. I go in here and I select everything and I go and, uh, let's see. Where is it? I think it's under transform. Transpose. So I can say, uh, I'd rather this be an F. <laughs> Maybe not. We'll see. Okay, that sounds pretty badass, actually. That's that's pretty good. So, <laughs> so it's really great. Uh, instead of going to your DAW and you'd have to like bump the notes, you'd have to go to each of your instruments and go, oh, let me bump this up three notes. Okay, let me go ahead and bump that three. You'd have to try. You have to do a lot of manual work to get to the same thing. That sounds good. I should have written my song in F minor. That's beautiful. That makes me want to cry. So I, I find it to be a pretty amazing tool. What it does, it kind of takes out the drudgery of um, of working in the DAW with lots of little MIDI notes. You can experiment with, um, you can do a lot of experimentation with the chord progression. Um, it also comes with a little pool of MIDI notes. Let me Let me just show you that really quick too. Okay, so after a minor breakdown, I did find it on my hard drive. I don't know why it's not showing up over here. But, uh, okay. So there's kind of this library of MIDI clips you can kind of mess around with just to kind of embellish whatever you happen to be doing. And so if I drop one of these in here, it'll uh, take the figure, toss it in here, and I want to change this to a piano. And just solo it. So there's also some cool tools here we can use to uh, like flip these around. Like if I want to take this, uh, if I want to take this and maybe flip it upside down, I can hit this button here. Or if I don't like that, it's too high. Or So it's a pretty neat uh, little idea. You can use it to kind of boost your track. If you're just totally out of ideas, it really helps you break through that writer's block. You can say, oh, let me try dropping one of these library phases in here and, uh, and just see phrases, <laughs> not phases, just see how it sounds. Okay, so you're probably wondering then, once you've got all this arranged in Sinfire, how do you get it into your DAW so that you can actually uh, do something great with it because Sinfire is not at all. It's really not meant for like mastering and getting all your effects right and all that. It's really just for kind of getting your MIDI notes right. So it's quite quite straightforward. If I just drag this over here and I hit spacebar, uh, then it will have the notes here. I can hit control and put them in the same column. And then, uh, I don't know why it's doing that. I get my face out of the way again. Open this up. There's always a one bar lead in on these. I'm not really sure why why it does that, but it's pretty easy to fix. Um, I'll just go in here and do that. Crop clips. And now it's showing me the uh, piano sequence from Sinfire. And we got the pads and uh, bass and that little flourish that we added later. So. Once it's here in Ableton, you're free to do whatever you want with your VSTs and uh, play your MIDI. On the subject of VSTs, um, Sinfire does support them. So this piano is actually coming out of contact. It's a concert grant. And uh, my pads were coming out of Zebra and so on. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about those, but... Uh, it's definitely a very powerful tool. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, Sinfire is, I believe, 500 euros. It's not cheap. 
Um, you also need, and when I yank this out, it's going to yell at me, I think. You also need one of these. It's the iLock key. <laughs> so uh, those are 50 bucks also. So, yep, got to have it. Un it's sad. I don't like this thing at all, but got a couple things that use it now. Anyway, hope you found that helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll probably do a tutorial on uh, how I came up with my uh, final arrangement for a track I've been working on. And uh, just kind of show how I created the arrangement in here and all that jazz. Anyway, that's enough talking for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.